Hello, welcome back to Stat 3050 at the University of Wyoming. Um, today we're indoors, inside, online, and having a good time. It's not bad. Um, today I've got an example in regression uh, on some log transformations, how we can overfit a model, and, uh, and pretty much just deal with frustration, right? We're dealing with frustration and statistics a lot of the time. Um, so here are some goals per usual, right? Um, determining, so the first one, first goal, uh, determining when to use log transformations, um, and then how we can avoid overfitting a model. We'll see that in a little bit. Uh, and then learning how to cope with this frustration. We're not gonna, we're not gonna do any swearing. We're just gonna peacefully move th our way through this example. We'll see that many models won't work out. Um, and then we want to report some proper interpretations with these log transformations. And so there's a little caveat with number four there. Um, we're not gonna be actually making any sort of interpretation based on our model, but we will be looking at some predicted values um, and we have to sort of manipulate them a little bit to put them back into our normal terms, into our non-transformed terms. Um, and like always, this example is brought to you just by the general late 90s. These are some albums I was listening to when I was making uh, when I was making this example, we've got Fashion Nugget by Cake, just absolute killer. Uh, and then Ben Fold 5, duh, right? The, uh, there's pretty much two bands that are uh, the epitome of the 90s, the late 90s. So uh, let's move on to R. Um, so today I've got an example on log transformations and, and how to implement them in R. Um, as far as the interpretation goes, from the previous videos that we saw, we saw that the uh, the interpretations can be a little finicky sometimes. So uh, for the purpose of the, this example, for the purpose of this example, uh, we won't really be doing much with the interpretations, but we will be uh, looking at, you know, the effects of, you know, log transformed variables. Um, so uh, the data that we've got are some lodgepole pine, lodgepole pine data. Um, so what we're going to do, I'm going to go in, set my working directory, and then I've got, this is where I have my data stored in this simple folder here. Um, so I, whoops, so I, I'm just going to do this. Uh, I'm going to call the data, I'm going to call the data pine, uh, just because, and then I'm going to use this free.csv and then pine.csv in quotation marks, so it goes out and gets it. Uh, and then let's take a look at the data. Well, so what, okay, what do we have? So let's take... Oops. So let's take a look at the data. So we have two columns here, one of diameter and one of biomass. So more, more or less sort of uh, how much tree there is. Um, I think this is a unit of um, volume or something like that, mass and volume together or something, who knows. Um, and then we have diameter. So, and the purpose of this is to figure out if we were to measure diameter, can we accurately kind of estimate the biomass so we don't have to chop down, you know, a tree every time just to figure out how much it is, uh, how much tree there is. And so that's what they did for these data. They, they measured diameter and then they chopped it up and then they measured the biomass. Um, and the, the purpose is, you know, maybe we can make a linear model, some kind of regression model uh, to figure out, you know, the relationship between these two. Okay, so let's take a look. Let's take a look at the summary. And we'll see the normal, just sort of the five number summary here, uh, six numbers really, um, minimum and a first quartile, the mean, the mean and the median, and then the third and uh, third quartile and the max for both. And we're sort of looking for as far as the data here, having the median and the mean to be about the same, you know, just kind of giving us some evidence that the sample size is large enough. Um, and it kind of is, uh, the, the sample size itself is 46, so that's, that's decent. Um, we see a, you know, a little discrepancy here in the median and the mean, but you know, that's all right, that's all right. We have better ways of figuring out whether or not these data are normally distributed. Um, of course, that is not part of our regression assumptions. Uh, where we look at the residuals for the normal distribution, not the data itself. Um, so that's all right, that's all right. So first, let's, let's bring in, oops, let's bring in, let's bring in the tidyverse. And so normally, actually, what I'm going to do here, too, I'm going to just going to say 
what libraries I'm going to need, and I'm going to bring this up here. And I also know that I'm going to need the ggfortify, the ggfortify library, just so we can uh, look at those residuals a little bit easier of our model. Um, and then I'm just going to comment this in, just so we're all uh, organized. Summarize. Cool, cool. All right. Well, so what, what do we want to do? Well, we want to plot the data, and we just kind of want to see how they're initially sort of interacting with each other, how one may be related to the other. Um, so we'll use this ggplot function here, and the data is, is the data, uh, pine in this case, and our aesthetic is, so we have some x, so we have some x, we have some x like this, and then some y, right, some y. And in this case, our x is our predictor, we want to be predicting biomass based on diameter. So we'll say diameter, uh, capital D there to R is case sensitive. So just remember that if you get in some errors. And, and if we were to just run this single line or this single kind of chunk here, we'll see the normal, right? Uh, we'll see the kind of usual usual plot with nothing on it. And then we'll just do the geom, uh, geom point with nothing in it. And then geom smooth geom smooth to make that line. And then you'll notice that, well, shoot, I forgot to do method equals LM for linear model. And we see that it's got this kind of curvature here. Um, in this case, in this case, it might actually be helpful to sort of visualize it this way, to kind of visualize this curve here. Because if we look at a straight line, if we look at a straight line here, we'll see that, oh man, you know, there is some curvature there. There is some sort of poor fit with this with this model, with this uh, linear model that we have. Um, we have not modeled it specifically yet, but we already kind of have an idea that, you know, maybe a straight line is not the best, it's maybe not the best. Um, and we also notice uh, a few things. So I'm going to zoom it in here. I'm going to zoom it in and notice. Our, the smallest point that we have, you know, are, are two positive values, right? Something somewhere along somewhere along 10 and somewhere along maybe five down here on the x-axis. But what this is saying, you know, is way down here where at the very end of this line, the predicted value, this estimated value down here is going to be some negative biomass, even though we know two things. We have this point up here that's actually representing that um, observation. And we know that biomass cannot be negative. So that's already sort of an issue that we need to take into account. Um, so let's let's just go ahead. Let's just go ahead and model it. Let's make a linear model and see and just see what happens. So we do that with we'll call this we'll call this whole thing linear model. Uh, just saying that this is a straight line. So LM that LM function stands for linear model, and our formula inside there is going to be biomass as a function of diameter all caps, or sorry, capital first letters there, just to make sure. Uh, and the data is coming from pine. We run the summary.lm function on our linear model, and we'll see the following. We'll see the following. Okay, so we have our residuals, our five number summary for the residuals. Uh, we already sort of see here that the median should be zero, right? In this case, though, uh, it's kind of not, right? It's, it's maybe slightly skewed. Uh, to the left there, just a little bit. Um, or I suppose maybe to the right. Who knows? Who knows? We'll look at the distribution here in a second. But we notice that that median is not zero. You know, it, in fact, it's it's kind of far away from zero. So we'll come back to that in a little bit when we're looking at the actual uh, residual plots. But if we come down here, we say, okay, cool. We have an estimate for our intercept, negative 144.8, um, with a significant p-value, and we also have a significant p-value for our slope, too. So based on this interpretation, we can say, you know, this might be a trustworthy estimate. Does it make sense, though? Well, if we were to put in a, a zero diameter, this would go off to zero, and then we're just left with the intercept here. And that is negative 144.8. Well, that doesn't really make any sense, right, in terms of biomass, right? We know that that cannot be negative. So we have an issue, right? We have, we have a bit of an issue here. 
Sometimes it's, you know, biologically meaningless to even make this go to zero, but in this case we do have values that are pretty close to zero that still have positive estimates for uh, biomass. So let's take a look, let's take a look at our, oops, let's take a look at our residuals. So we're going to use this auto plot function, auto plot, uh, and then our linear model, our linear model. And let's get, we'll get rid of that smooth line too, um, just because sometimes it's a little misleading. And then and let me, let me make some more room here. And then it will just clean up the background a little bit too, so it's easier to look at. We'll run that. And what do we see? And I'll zoom it in here too. Bad. This is not good, right? This is not good. So already we kind of knew that the goodness of fit that we saw in our original scatter plot uh, was not great. It was not good, right? It kind of had that curvature. And we can especially see that curvature here in our residuals, right? So we can check goodness of fit in terms of simple linear regression from either this fitted values plot or, sorry, the residuals versus fitted values plot, or we can look at the scatter plot of the original data. But in this case, we sort of see the same story. We see that it is curving outward, or curving downward, rather, and then it's kind of fanning outward, too. It's kind of fanning outward. Very interesting. Not the best. And so I'm not even going to look at the QQ plot. I'm not even going to look at the histogram because I know that my sort of first and second assumptions failed, okay? Well, so what do we do? What do we do? Well, just a great question. Just an absolutely great question. Let's, maybe let's try modeling this quadratically, maybe? So we'll have a square term in there. I'm gonna say, I don't know if, the, I have no idea if this is gonna work, right? Um, I actually do have an idea if this will work, but uh, this is just for the purpose of the example. So I'm calling this, I'm calling this quad model for quadratic for short. And then I'm going to use still that linear model, the function, right? Um, and then formula equals biomass as a function of, and I want to do a quadratic model. So what, so how I do that is by diameter plus, right? Plus to add an, another predictor. And then I use this I operator here, this sort of I function. And I just say diameter squared, right? And let me spell it right too. Um, and then, then uh, our data still is pine. Our data still is pine. So if I run that, and then I use the summary.lm on the quad model, we run that. Okay, what, what happens? Don't forget that our purpose is prediction, right? And already I see, well, we're sort of SOL, right? We don't have any significant p-values for the intercept, so we cannot trust this estimate. We don't have any p-values. We don't have any significant p-values for the diameter, uh, the, the slope coefficient for the diameter, but we do for the squared term. But in this case, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really help us that much. Uh, we see that our r-squared did go up, I believe, uh, a little bit at least. Um, so I am just going to check the residuals again, just to make sure that I'm not missing anything, right? So our object, let me scroll down here, our object is quad model, and we'll just get rid of the smooth line there, because I don't like the way it looks, it's misleading, and we'll do that. And then let's take, we'll, we'll zoom this into, we'll zoom this into. So now our residuals, our residuals look decent, but we still see this kind of clumping over here and it's fanning outward. It's fanning outward like that. Um, maybe, maybe we live in a world where we're okay with that. Well, if we look over here at the QQ plot, that's all over the place, right? And so I don't even want to see the histogram because I already know that the histograms are going to look pretty funky um, just because of this looking pretty funky. But also this is really good evidence of, of, you know, kind of fanning outward. There's some pattern there that we don't want. We want to kind of spread these out. And let's say that, let's, let's just kind of take a look at the goodness of fit too. So what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna copy and paste this code, my ggplot code, and then I'm going to, within the GM of smooth, I have this cool function here um, where I can essentially just put in my regression formula in its you know basic terms, in its general terms. 
So I would just say x plus x, sorry, x plus i, x squared. And we'll see what that looks like. And we keep method equals lm too. So we run that and we see, okay, we see like the line is fitting a little bit better, but we still have, you know, we still have this residuals pretty far away. We've got some residuals that are pretty big over here and over here. So maybe not the best, maybe not the best. Well, maybe, maybe, let's try doing a polynomial, a polynomial regression, polynomial model, we'll say. So I'm gonna call it poly model. And what I'm gonna do is I wanna say, okay, maybe having a cubed term in there will help it out. Will it? Well, I don't know, probably not. Cause we're already sort of getting into, we're already sort of getting into overfitting the model. Okay. Let's see, so that's gonna be diameter plus, okay, i, and then diameter squared plus i diameter, diameter cubed, diameter cubed, wow. This might be, this might work, who knows? I do know, and I already know that based on this, we're sort of already overfitting the model. So let's take a look at the summary. Oh, nice. So we get, we get significant p-values for everything. The intercept looks uh, decent, right? Uh, diameter is a negative, neg uh, the slope is a negative um, 22.3, uh, and then the square term is 1.6, then cubic term is negative 0 0.02. Um, our r squared has gone up quite a bit. That makes sense though, right? Because we know that as we add more predictors to our model, the r squared is going to go up. And so we see here that the adjusted r squared is sort of accounting for that, um, but it hasn't gone down all too, too much. So maybe, maybe this is good. Well, let's check the residuals. So we'll use the auto plot function again. We're going to keep using that all the time. We're going to wear it out. Probably have to buy a new one, maybe in a year or so. The smooth, the smooth color, NA, and then the theme, classic. Okay. Let's see, what does this look like? Well, oh, man, our regression assumptions have not been met. We still have this clumping over here. We have this fanning outward, sort of everything's very spread out over here and not spread out over here. And then if we look, we don't even need to, but we can look at the QQ plot and it's really just getting worse as we're adding more uh, predictors, more uh, squared and, and cubed and whatever other terms, right? So it's really not helping us out a lot. So what do we do? Well, what do we do? We know that if we want to rescale, if we want to rescale data, we can, we can log transform. And we've seen this in one example before, but in this case, it might be that we need to log transform both our predictor and our outcome. Well, so how do we do that? Well, recall that if we want to log X, we can either make a new column, we can either make a new column over here uh, and here for the log x and the log y, um, or we can just simply, we can just very simply put it in our formula. So I'm logging x, so I want biomass as a function of log of, log of diameter. And then the data is pine, data is pine. And I'll hit it with that summary.lm log x model, so that's all right. And well, what do we get? What do we get? There we go, okay? So we see here now, uh, our estimate is decent, right, for both the intercept and the log of the slope, right, or sorry, the log of x, the slope coefficient of this, right, 244. And we see that we get significant p-values for both of them too. Are we done? Well, no, because we need to check the assumptions. We need to check the residuals. Um, and just a kind of a quick note here too, we, we noticed that the R squared has gone down quite a bit, right? But that just means that the, maybe, maybe the points are being more spread out. The data points are being more spread out along the line. Well, so let's see what's exactly happening. So again, we use the auto plot, and you can fast forward this if you want. Um, I totally get that, and let me be consistent here. And then we'll use the smooth. And then the theme, theme is classic, so classic. 
And let's see, what do we get? Well, what do we get? We'll zoom it in already. We don't really need to zoom in. We see here that we get this big time curvature, right? The data points are now no longer clumped up over here, uh, but we still see that that curvature is present, right? That curvature is, is really there. And that is, um, that is not good. We could plot these on the log scale. We can plot the actual data points on the log scale. Um, but right now I don't even want to do that because I know that this is just not great, right? This is not good for us. So let's say, let's say, and let me be consistent here. That's a log transform of X. Maybe we log transform Y and leave X alone. So we'll, we'll do exactly that. Log Y model. Uh, and the same thing, uh, the formula, formula equals, uh, and then biomass as a function of diameter. Now, what did I miss? I just caught it. What did I miss? Um, data equals pine. So this, this needs to be log transformed. So we'll just say biomass like that. We'll run that. Hit it with the summary.lm log y model. Oops. And what do we get? Okay, maybe looking a little bit better, maybe looking a little bit better. So we see then that we have two significant p-values for our estimates, one for the intercept and one for the slope coefficient, so that's good. Our r-squared, or I should say the r-squared, is pretty high, pretty decent, especially for just one predictor. But before we can say that we're done, again, we need to check the residuals. We gotta look at the residuals. So we'll use this auto plot again, again, and again, and again. And we'll do that. Same deal as always. Cool. And what do we get? What do we get? Okay, we, so we get a different story, right? We now see curvature in the opposite direction. We see it curving upward now. However, one thing we do notice is that now the points are a little bit more spread out. Uh, and they're not sort of clumping over in one place. Well, what do we do? What do we do? So our first and second assumptions of linear regression have failed um, in pretty much every case. But what we have not done yet, what we have not done yet, is log transforming both y and x. So we'll say uh, x and y here. So how do we do that? Well, it's just the same thing as always. We'll say log x, y model. And you can call them whatever you want. Um, and then we'll just do the linear model and the formula equals log of, uh, and then we're doing biomass as a function of, biomass as a function of the log of diameter. The log of diameter. So that's good. Oops, that's good. And then data equals pine. We'll run that. And then hit it with the summary.lm. Uh, and just a quick note too. If you wanted, um, you could sort of put the summary.lm around this function too, if you wanted to. It gets a little messy. I just like doing this so I know sort of temporally what I'm doing. Um, okay, so we've got the summary. Okay, here we go. Here we go. So same thing, right? We see our estimates both have statistically significant p-values. So that's good. That's all right. Uh, we see this the intercept here, negative 1.7 and then 2.2, right? That's all right. That's good. Um, and then if we come down here and look at the r-squared, we see that the multiple r-squared or just the you know normal r-squared in, in our case and the adjusted r-squared about the same. So that's good. That's good. Kind of makes sense, right? We're not adding too much more to the model. Um, and then the last thing we need to do, the last thing we need to do is auto plot the residuals. And so we'll just do this. Again, fast forward. If you don't want to see me type all this, I might even cut this out. Who knows? Okay. Here we go. Here we go. So we're zooming into the residuals and we see now, finally, finally, that we get fairly decent residuals. We have one um, one observation out here that is you know, way off. We might need to do something about that, but for now, for this example, let's just ignore it. Um, and then we see now we have no curvature. We have no curvature and everything, for the most part, is equally scattered, which is great. So first assumption, goodness of fit, 
check, right? We're good. We, we kind of see everything here has no curvature. It's pretty equally spread around the line. Two, our second assumption is that there is equal scatter. There's no clumping of residuals, and we, we see that as well, right? And then three, looking at the distribution, distribution of the residuals, we see here that most of the points are on the line. We see, you know, Mr. 35 out here, way out there. Not going to worry about that too much. Um, so let's look at the histogram of the residuals too. So we use this HIT, this base R histogram, and we use the resid function here. Uh, and then we'll just put in our model. And what happens? Very nice, right? Again, this is that, this is that um, observation 35 out here. Not going to worry about that too, too much. But we see here that we get a fairly decent looking histogram now. If we were to plot the other residuals from our previous models, they would be all over the place, right? They would not look, you know, this decent. Um, okay, cool. So we're not going to worry about interpreting our model, but maybe let's, let's just take a look at our regression equation and how we can predict some new values. Because um, the, the point of this is for prediction, right? The purpose of these data are for prediction. So let's see. Let's see what this looks like. So our, our, our equation, our equation, regression equation, is the following. Uh, it's the log of, oops, the log of y. And actually, let me bring up, let me bring up the summary of our model too. So I have this. Actually, not even the summary. I can use this coefficients. Um, cool. Okay, so log of y equals, and I'm just going to kind of copy and paste this to about two decimal places out. Nothing too important. Um, and then plus 2.21, or 2.22, rather, uh, log of x. Okay, so that's our regression equation. If we wanted to, we would just plug in x here, take the log of that, multiply it by 2.2, and then add, um, you know, negative 1.7 to it, and then we would get y in logged terms. Okay, so a little bit, a little bit of uh, some work to kind of get from one place to the other. Um, but I can show you very quickly how to kind of get through that, how to parse through that. So we use this predict.lm, predict.lm, and our object, let me get rid of this, our object is our model, our object is our model, and then our new data, again remember that it needs to be in the form of a data frame, uh, and then it also needs to match our x name, so diameter, diameter equals, and let's just pick some new value that we haven't seen yet. Um, and let me actually bring up the old, the old scatter plot here. Cool, cool. So we've got that. Um, and so I, you know, there's not a lot of data maybe on this this kind of little window here around 21 or so. Not a lot over here, maybe 28 to 30 ish. Um, so we can say maybe let's try let's try 28. So just to note, just to note what R is doing is that it's taking this whole thing and it's just plugging in x. So we do not, we do not need to log x. What we do not need to do is this. We do not need to do this. We leave it the same. We leave it as 28, because that's the value that we care about. But we'll notice that when we get this value, this 5.68, so we see that this equals, this equals, let me write it up here, equals 5.68 reporting the y back on the log scale. And, but thankfully, we know what to do. We know what to do. We will just exponentiate. We use this exp function. We'll just exponentiate 5.68. And when we do that, we'll get an, a, a reasonable estimate for the biomass. Looks like that. Uh, and I'll round this just a little bit to about two decimal places. And so that makes sense, right? We see that the biomasses are all fairly large numbers and they're sort of going up as diameter goes up too. We just had to transform it on the log scale so we could accurately estimate you know, new values, so we can accurately estimate the relationship between diameter and biomass. And this, this, is, really, this is really it. Um, so just a few notes, again, uh, every time, uh, any time that you have some log transformed um, y, you always have to exponentiate the predicted value that you get. And it'll make sense too because you'll say, oh, you know, 5.68, uh, that doesn't make any sense because 
all of these are really big. Oh wait, you know, I forgot to exponentiate. Um, so that's all right, that's good. And just know that the x value never has to be logged because it is being put in here. Um, and it's the, the code, the computer is doing it all by itself. Um, if we were, if we were to log, take the log of 28, we would get some, we would get some funky values. So I'll show you. We get this 0 0.97, 0 0.97. If we were to put that in here, we would get some, oops, we would get some, uh, some really tiny, really tiny value, 2.26, which doesn't make any sense, right? Um, so just to know, just to know, you can always put the normal, uh, you can always put the, you know, untransformed x in there and just exponentiate y if y is log transformed. Of course, if you have two untransformed variables, y equals some function of x, um, then you're good. You don't need to do any kind of transformations at all. Um, okay, so that's the example, log transforming x and y. If you want, you can go through and figure out, you know, the percent change of y for the percent change of x. If you wanted to, you can go review those videos that I made, uh, sort of running through the math. Um, but for right now, you're pretty much set. You've got log transformations under your belt, which is good. Uh, you've got quadratic terms under your belt, uh, polynomial terms under your belt. You're really getting a lot of tools right now for regression, for making some, for making some relation between one predictor and one outcome. In future videos, we're going to work on multiple regression where we're adding a bunch of different predictors trying to predict or trying to model some outcome, some single outcome still. So stay tuned for that, and I will see you next time.